I meet a girl named Amanda Gardner. Well, what I end up doing is, let's keep in mind, I've only got 100,000 or so. So I go and I start buying houses in the area, in this area called JC Napier, next to, it's just close to downtown. And I buy these houses and I start, I buy them for like 60, 70,000. And I record the sales at 210, 190, 12205, that sort of thing. Same thing. And I refinance the houses. I start pulling out money. I meet this girl, uh, Amanda Gardner. She, we, we hit it off within a few months. She's moved in to, we move into a house in that area. I renovate a house. We move in there. I borrow three and a half million dollars and I'm buying houses. Now I'm buying houses, recording the value. I start all over, you know, I borrow like whatever, three and a half million dollars. I meet Amanda. We move in together. Uh, we're, we're, we're do buying. You tell, do you tell her? Uh, do you tell her? She, about she kind of, you know, what she knew was that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's odd, right? I have no photographs. Everything I own is brand new. She's like, you don't, there's nothing in this house that's more than four months old. <laughs> or six months old, you have no photographs. Mm -hmm. You have no internet presence. You have no, you know, it's every stick of clothing is brand new. You don't have old pairs of jeans. Do, do you tell her stories about the past or anything? Like, is there a fabricated? The, it, the init initially, there was a fabricated version that I owned a, I owned a mortgage company. Um, my, my typical story was like, I owned a mortgage company and I got bought out by household bank. Started doing very well. I got bought out by a household bank. I have a no non-compete clause. I got, you know, I ended up with like half a million dollars after paying off all my bills uh, and just decided to kind of travel around the, the U.S. And now I'm here and I'm going to start renovating houses. Nice. But that, you know, you don't call home. Nobody calls you. Your family doesn't call you. You tell stories about your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, friends. I don't know any of these friends. Never seen any of these friends. They never call you. They never, you know, it's just like, it's like, ah, oh, shit. So at some point, I basically just said to her, look, I'm, listen, at one point I had to have a check cut. I refinanced the house, right? And I had like, I want to say, I'm going to say something like, it might've been 30,000, but let's say 20,000. I had a $20,000 check cut to Amanda Gardner. Mm -hmm. Cause you have to have these checks. You can't have them cut to me. So I would say, Hey, there's a second mortgage on there. And I provide a second mortgage or I provide, you know, I provide different things. And I knew if I, I need names of people to cut these things to. So I had a check cut for whatever. So I remember we're at dinner one night. This is before she really knows who I am. And I said, hey, uh, I said, oh, and she goes, oh, did you had a refinance? She goes, how'd that thing go? Your refinance? I went, oh, thank God you said that. Boom. I said, I need you to deposit this. Give it a check for 20,000. She's like, um, I can... I can, I can go tomorrow and, and I can deposit it. And <laughs> I, um, um, and I'm like, no, no, I said, I'm like, look, it's fine. Just deposit. So I can get, as soon as it clears, I'll, I'll, I'll get you a cashier's check. Um, I was like, no, just deposit it and keep it in your bank. It's fine. So she's like, what is going on? You know? And so we have this conversation and I tell her, look, people are looking for me. Who? Law enforcement. Which ones? All of them. You know, she's like, that doesn't even, for what? I go, mostly bank fraud. And she's like, well, how are they not finding you? Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody, you know, people know you, like, you know, your general contractor, which I met four months before. Mm -hmm. This guy, six months before, this was two months before, you know. She's like, so-and-so, so-and-so, so. And I'm like, right, right. Well, I said, well, she's like, I mean, they've got your name. They've got your, I go, well, that's identity theft. And she was like, what do you mean? I said, well, my name's not, you know, my name's not, it's not Joseph Carter. And it, what is your, what is your name? I go, look, you know, it's, it's, you don't need, don't even worry about it. This is what's happening. This is where I'm at. And this has been months into the relationship. I mean, this is, or oops, I'd say maybe a month or two in, but uh, you know, she was just too inquisitive and, oh, I know what it was. She found like $40,000 in cash in my freezer one night. That was another thing that happened. She went to get a popsicle and she opened up the, the flip to get a popsicle and she opened the wrong one and there was all cash. And she was like, like, you know, I, the other day, you know, in this conversation, she's like, the other day I opened up the popsicle box and there's cash. And I'm like, so I kind of explain it, <laughs> but I had a feeling she's not going to, she's going to be okay with this. You know, so she, she was, okay. she was okay with it. Like, I mean, to we, me, that's just a fascinating conversation to have. Like, 
It, it was a great conversation. Because oftentimes in relationships, you learn about each other and you find out new things. And here you find that's out. That's a doozy. Yeah, it's a good one to find out. <laughs> the name you're using is not your real name. And the Secret Service, the FBI, and everybody else are looking for you. Yeah. And you're, like, to be honest, you're not a violent criminal. So it's like. And I, you know, you know, but she didn't know my name. Like, she was like, she. And I told her, I said, look, if you start digging, if you find out my name, like I'll leave. Like there's certain things that catch you. Staying in contact with people that you know, that's how you get caught, you know? Going back to see people, that's how you get caught, you know? Um, telling people who you are, that's how you get caught. And I was like, so I'm Joseph Carter. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay. You know, and keep in mind too, this girl, do you, you Oh, your car's broken or your car's not doing well, take it and trade it in. We'll go get you another car. We'll go get you, you know, an infinity, you know, FX or whatever, you know, a $55,000, $60,000 vehicle. She's driving the equivalent of a, a beat up old Nova. You know, I mean, it's, you want to go on vacation? We'll go on vacation. You want to do this? You want to do that? So, you know, we're buying houses. I, I'm, we're, we're renovating houses. We're, we're building brand new houses. We're buying lots. Like she's like in the middle of this, like, holy Jesus, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank, in our bank account, uh, her bank account. I open up a corporation in her name. She's opening up bank accounts. She's got web, there's websites. It's, it's a lot. And while this is happening, we start seeing a, a, a friend of hers. So this other girl comes in the picture. Her name's Trina. And um, Trina is um, semi-lesbian. So is it, is it like a sexual thing? Yeah. Or so, actual relationship? No it's, no, it's more like a, she's coming over a couple times a week. Okay. So we've got a ton of, a tons going on. Uh, and, I put this. So while this is happening, I, I end up coming out in like several magazines. So I'm thinking this whole thing's dying down, but it's not dying down because now I just got caught and handcuffed in a bank, walked out of the police station, outran marshals. Although that, that part, the marshal thing never was never in the papers, but, um, the getting caught and handcuffed in the bank, when that hit the papers, that's everywhere, bro. That's huge. You know, suddenly Chicago Tribune's running a series, The Fugitives. Um, I'm in Bloomberg Business Week. They run an article, or article called, you know, Sharks in the Housing Pool. Uh, then you've got uh, Fortune Magazine comes out with a thing because by now, guess what? Becky's been caught. Oh, Becky. Becky. <laughs> oh, Becky. Is she in Houston or whatever? In Houston, got caught. And did she? But gangster, bro. Like the way she, here's the thing. Hey. It, I, hey, there you go. No. Oh, no. She told on me immediately. Oh, she did. Yeah, oh, fine. no. It's fine. She did oh, the right no. thing. So here, here's what's funny about that. I don't that, know though. about that. She, <laughs> here's what she says. Loyalty is everything in this world, my friend. <laughs> did that you and I it's disagree fine. on? I just took off. I just took off. Still. Uh, still. Honor and left her with, 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 listen, with like six or like five or six hundred thousand dollars is what I left her with. It's not, a, it's not all about money, Matthew. It's also about just like. You know, ride or die. There's a meaning to that. Oh my God, I'm okay. sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So she told. Uh, she said everything. Well, here's what, what when I say gangster, when she gets caught, yeah. Um, they come in. She's in the middle of beauty school. She's paid for beauty school. She's going through beauty school. She's going to open like a salon or something. So she's in there cutting hair in a class, you know, on a mannequin. And all of a sudden, like five or six uh, secret service agents come in, guns drawn, screaming, get on the ground, get on the ground. She said, everybody dropped the ground. She said, I'm sitting there with scissors going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they grab her, they handcuff her, they bring her in. And the whole time, now at that point, she was Rebecca, well, she was yeah, her name was Rebecca Hickey. She went by Becca. She so she's Rebecca Hickey, mm -hmm. which is a, you know it's, she's got a Texas driver's license, the whole thing. And they're screaming at her, and they she they put her in the car and they're driving the whole way. She is the guy the Secret Service agent told me forty five minutes. Mm -hmm. She's telling us you're losing your job, bro. Mm -hmm. You're losing. I mean, he's he's like I I couldn't believe it. Like we we got pictures of her. Yeah. We're like this is you. She's like that's not me. Are you insane? Yeah. Look at that chubby little thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. 
would not budge till they actually put her hand on the scanner. And she goes, okay, I'm, I'm Rebecca Halk. What do you need? <laughs> They're like, where's Matt Cox? She's like, I have no idea that fucker left me like a year ago. So, um, <laughs> so. But she contributed to the story, to the legend that's already growing. Oh, oh because she was interviewed by uh, Fortune Magazine. Mm-hmm. And it was horrendous. The article is horrendous. He was abusive. He, he's a Don Juan that, that, forced me to fall in love with him, commit mortgage fraud, and then took all the money and left. By the way, they found like 40 or 50 grand on her and maybe another 30 or 40 in her bank account and no other money. Hmm. Yeah. Where's the other money? Um, So anyway, and she was, by the way, she got caught. She was in communication with her family. So she's talking to her mom. That's and, when she got caught ultimately. And her mother, through multiple conversations, one conversation being, mom, I'm doing fine. I'm, I can't tell you where I am you know, exactly, but I, I'm in Houston, Texas. I'm fine. Next one, six months later, I enrolled in beauty school. Houston, Texas beauty school. How many are there? Yep. And her mom, bipolar, I just want to see my daughter. Yep. I'm going to call the Secret Service. Yeah. I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. And, and honestly, she is doing the right thing. So um, 